Welcome back to another movie review. Today I am reviewing the movie called Cheaper by the Dozen with Steve Martin, Hilary Duff, and many, many other actors. Let me first ask you a question. What would you do if you were Steve Martin in the movie and you had a wife and 12 kids? How would you deal with it? How would you be able to make ends meet with 12 kids and your wife and yourself? That's a total of 14 people in the family. How, how, how would you deal with that? I want to know. Put that in the comments below. Even though I know you guys won't do it any which way. So who cares? So in this movie, you got Steve Martin, who is Tom Baker. Now, he is a football coach. He plays not, it's not a big team, but it is big enough that he can pay his bills and scrape by and everything and have to, well, get their bank accounts to zero 12 times each month because they, well, just don't have enough of money. But like, they have enough to pay their bills, but by the end of the month, there they got zero dollars, and so it's hard for them. So they live in a place called Midland, and from there, the father is a football coach, and the mother is writing a story. And then you got twelve kids, one name, one that is um, twenty-two years old, who lives with her boyfriend, who is played by Ashton Ashton Kutcher, who is a real doorknob in the movie. And he is supposed to be an actor, but he's just a one-hit wonder with his Tommy Max um, body spray or cologne commercial where it's like, oh, to the max with Tommy Max. Like, no one really gives two craps about it. But still. So what happens is they are... They all live in a place called Midland and they love where they live and they got 12 kids and you find out how the story goes is that like you know they have one kid then they have another and then another and then they have twins and then they have more kids and then by the time they are at 10 kids they have a set of twins again which equal 12 kids and all that happens over time of course. And so what happens is that Steve Martin, who is Tom Baker, gets a nice job offer by um, a good friend named Shake. Now, kind of weird for a name, but whatever. So his name is Shake, and he is part of a, I guess, a university, I'd say. And he, and he has his own program, and so he wants Tom Baker to be able to run the Stallions, is the team. As it goes, as he's running the team, his wife finally um, gets an answer from uh, from her friend Diane, who publi who wants to publish her book. Now, her book is called Cheaper by the Dozen. Ha ha ha! Play on words, like you know, movie Cheaper by the Dozen, book called Cheaper by the Dozen, and so as it goes, um, Tom Baker's wife, who is Kate Baker is um, played by Bonnie Hunt and she is going to New York for three days so that she could have her book launch and everything else. But the thing is, Diane tells her that when she's there that it's going to be longer than three days. It's going to be like two weeks. And people must be thinking like, and she must be thinking like, what the heck? Two weeks? I mean, literally, this is crazy. I thought it was going to be three days, but it's two weeks. So she stays there. Because, of course, Tom Baker thinks that um, he is able to run the house and everything and make it snappy in their new giant house that they bought thanks to um, them getting a nice, well, Tom Baker getting a nice um, salary raise where um, one of the daughters doesn't need handy downs anymore or um, the kids can do more stuff and everything. And, you know, so as it goes... Um, Kate is on her tour and everything, and the house is just going buck wild. You got kids hanging upside down. You got one kid playing with his sister while using her as a human dartboard. 
And then you got like people getting in trouble, like one kid puking because one of the girls throws her brother's, um, well, like um, protection cup into uh, into the spaghetti because it's hot and she just kind of like flings it and it flies in the spaghetti and one of the youngest brothers who is the one of the twins um, looks at it and says hey is that blood and Tom's like no it's not well the little kid throws up and then so you got one of the older brothers who come by and say hey do you need any help dad and well, slips and falls right on the puke, and he's like, well, I think we're covered now, because most of your back the, did the work of cleaning up the puke and all this, and so the kid throws up too, and there's more puke on the floor and everything. So it's crazy that they're all having um, problems. Uh, Tom trying to make dinner, trying to run a football team, trying to run, well, 11 kids, because um, the oldest daughter lives with her boyfriend, the doorknob. And so he asks Nora for help, and every and everyone comes and uh, and Nora, Nora's the oldest daughter, so Nora comes and helps and everything. So the other kids are like, "Well, let's pull a prank on doorknob," and so they they pull a prank where they get doorknob, who is played by Ashton Kutcher. Um, they get him all soaking wet. So they're like, oh, we're going to dry his clothes and then we're going to soak his clothes in meat. So they smell like raw ground beef. And you must be thinking like, well, that's crazy. Why would you want to soak your clothes in ground beef? Well, lo and behold, they do that because the factor is the dog likes the smell of ground beef. I mean, which, what kind of dog doesn't like a ground beef? And so he is sitting at the dinner table and everything. And all of a sudden this dog comes flying at him, like literally. And he's wondering what the heck's going on and yada, yada, yada. As it goes, um, the dog kind of like destroys him. And, and he was just like totally mortified that the dog would do something to him and found out that, well, the underwear was soaked in meat. And it's like, wow. Who could have came up with that? Well, you find out that one of the daughters, Sarah Baker, is the mastermind against all this and comes up with it. And so it's just crazy, crazy as it is. And while and while everyone's doing their own thing, like the mother's still on her trip and everything, and the father's trying to run his football team and trying to run the household, he tries to find someone who can take care of the kids. Well, lo and behold, no one wants to take care of 12 kids. I mean, it's like, well, how many kids do you have? Well, I got like two plus 10, or I got a dozen kids or 12 kids and nobody wants to take on the job because I mean, it's a big, heavy job. And so as that goes on, the mother is doing a radio show and the daughter, Sarah Baker, calls and everything. And says, hey, you know, you got to come home straight away. And you got one of the the sons whose name is Mark. He's like, I want to talk to her. I want to talk to mom and all this. And well, lo and behold, the phone breaks and the line goes dead. And Mark just feels like, well, no one cares about me. And so as it moves on, um, the, the, the mother, Kate, comes back home. And they're like, well, you know, I'll be back home. They're going to do an Oprah interview. And the, the Oprah, and Oprah will be here and everything. So they clean the house um, over the space of like a day. And while that goes on, um, you get the camera crew in the next day. And they come in and they're ready to set up and everything. And the family is just going crazy because Mark feels like no one cares about him. And so everyone's just fighting about something. And lo and behold, everyone's like, uh, the guy who is filming all this, who's going to film all this, is tells Oprah, like, you don't want to come here. It's a crap show. Like, I mean, this is supposed to be the happiest family, but unfortunately, it's not. It's more like uh, a family that argues because there are 14 people in the family. And so time goes on and you find out that uh, the mother, Kate, is looking for Mark. And she's like, has anybody seen Mark? And well, lo and behold, Mark is gone. Mark is gone. They can't find him anywhere. They look outside. They ask the neighbors. And you get this lady who's a real complete douche. Like, no, we're not going out there to help. We're not. Um, our son, his, his, it's his bed. It's past his bedtime. And the father is like, we're going out to help. And so 
the father and the son, they go out to help. They can't find him. And then all of a sudden, Tom gets an idea and says, the place that he wants to be, where he loves the most. Well, lo and behold, where do you think they find Mark? Put that in the comments below if you care to even do that, which I know you don't. So, as it goes, they find out that Mark is at the train station to go back to Midland where life was better, where he had friends and he was happier and everything. And, you know, they were all worried and, you know, and you see the next day that they're like, well, you know, people always fight over things. Like, you know, you got Sarah and the oldest daughter, uh, well, one of the second oldest daughter who was played by Hilary Duff. They always fight and you wonder, well, you know, they might fight all the time and have problems, but they would die for each other. That's just how it is because they're family. They care about each other. And so as it goes, you find out later that Tom finally says, you know, I'm ending the season, like in the sense of that at the end of the season, he tells a shake that he will be quitting. So shakes like, OK, next week I will I will tell everyone that you'll be you'll be coached until the end of the season. And that's it. Well, lo and behold, it took 12 times for Tom to find a job that was close by home where he could still spend time with family and do everything he wants. And they have fun. They have fun as a family. And they they just love each other. It's a great family movie for anybody who wants to watch it. I mean, I'm 31 and I love watching movies like that because it's just an important role that that it's important to be strong with family. So like in the case of, of what's going on in the world, just to give a minute of your time... Like with the coronavirus, I mean, it's the biggest epidemic I've, I've seen in my lifetime and bigger than like the SARS or the swine flu. And, you know, it's it's crazy. And, you know, we got to stay strong as, as a family. So if you have family or um, loved ones, go call them, go talk to them, go just see if they're okay, see if there's anything they need. Because, I mean... It's important to to communicate with family. It's okay to to be like, you know, I really don't want to call them because I've had some problems in the past. But, you know, in the end result, you got to call them. You got to tell them that I care about you. I'm here for you and let them know you're there because it's very important because without family, you got nothing. I mean, literally nothing. And so I hope you enjoyed watching this movie review and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new movies and also put in the comments below, really put in the comments below what movies you want me to review and I can do that for you. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.